start. Oh God. Chaplain, would you come forward, please? Ladies and gentlemen, we would be remiss if we did anything without asking for the blessings of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, at this time, I want to call on our, our uh, Gulf Coast Battalion Chaplain, Compatriot Donovan with the Hall of Field to lead us in an invocation. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who makes the light glow, the water flow, and the wind blow. Thank you for this beautiful morning in our beautiful Southland. And thank you for every blessing you have bestowed upon us. Too many to mention. Wonderful Father, bless this our gathering as we seek to honor this good man, Private Thomas Macon, who was in his day, like us, your humble servant. May all that we do and say be pleasing in your sight and in accordance with the teachings of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, what a beautiful day. Uh, on behalf of Magnolia Cemetery, the friends of Magnolia Cemetery, our UDC, Camp, and Camp 11, and the Gulf Coast Battalion, we want to say thank you for letting us have this opportunity today to do this for this family. Uh, it means a lot to us to be able to honor uh, your descendant, and it certainly means a lot to us to see a family that's interested in preserving the heritage of their ancestor to, uh, to take the time and the effort that it took to get this uh, business done with today. Uh, so we do appreciate it. At this time, uh, Kenny Ford, where are you, my friend? Right here. Come on up here, and, and Kenny's going to give us a biography of, uh, of Thomas Hill Maker. Okay. Hey, Kenny. <laughs> Woo! Thank you. <laughs> I'm just glad everybody was able to make it here today. I know some of y'all come all the way from Georgia. Uh, uh, Miss Julie Hessler, where are you at? Okay. Then uh, my cousin Jack Badon and his family come from uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, Thomas Hill Macon was born in Pickens County, Alabama in uh, 1842. And uh, his dad was uh, Thomas Woodward Macon. And, uh, he moved the family from uh, Fairfield, uh, South Carolina. And uh, Sometime around about 1850 or so, they came to Mobile, and uh, Thomas started to see this this uh, young girl named uh, Cecilia Gale. And right about the time the Civil War started, they you know they kind of had this little thing going, and uh, they wanted to get married, but he decided to go join the army. So. She told him that he would wait on him to get back and all that. So uh, he went to Gettysburg in July of 1863, where he lost his left arm. And uh, he was there until 1865 when uh, General Lee surre uh, uh, surrendered to Grant in uh, Appomattox. Uh, he came back to Mobile only to find that his girlfriend, who said, you know, who uh, said that had loved him, loved him and all that. She didn't want anything to do with him anymore. So, and I don't, and she was like, I don't want to marry him. I don't want to marry him no more. I can thank Sharon, Sharon over here for sharing that uh, information. So, uh, no, Holly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
And, uh, but her daddy, Louis Gale, he decided that, well, this man's been in the war, fought for his country for four years. He, uh, he deserves to at least talk to her. So uh, she went and saw him, and uh, she changed her mind again. And so in November, uh, around November 21st, 1865, they were married in Mobile, and uh, they had 13 children together. And uh, I believe uh, seven of those, uh, or actually about five of those, lived to have their own kids and everything. And uh, I'm glad to see that uh, uh, two of those are, re are represented here today. The families of uh, Emily Macon and uh, Rosa Macon are, are here. Uh, and uh, I found some of the other kin people who are living in Florida, but they weren't able to make it today. So that's from Uncle Walter's family. And uh, Thomas was a uh, clerk in a store uh, somewhere here in Mobile. I actually have a copy of his handwriting from 1879, which I'm going to hand out to everybody here. Uh, he was applying for his Confederate pension, which is, uh, it was uh, in March 1879. Uh, it's written on his company's uh, stationery, uh, and uh, he has some pretty fancy handwriting, which is which is it's it's very unique to have something like that because most people, uh, or a lot of people back then, didn't, didn't even know how to read. So, and uh, I could tell he was a very uh, educated man, and uh, I, I would just like to share a little bit more background on how all this, on how I got involved in all this. Uh, about probably about eight or ten years ago, I started to want to know about my uh, great grandmother's family, which was uh, Willie, uh, uh, Willie Mae Tillman, and uh, my grandmother, which is uh, who's sitting in that chair right there, and uh, she shared me, she shared what, which information she could with me, which wasn't very much, I'm afraid, but. <laughs> Well, it's, you know, you kind of know that, that you're in for a, uh, a, a hard mission when you can't, when you only know two names and you can only spell one of them, so. <laughs> but, uh, so I got in touch with the uh, archives up in Montgomery, and uh, they sent me uh, Thomas's military records, and I had no idea of how much they were going to send me. And, uh, for anybody who is wanting to get involved in Civil War research and find out about your Confederate ancestors, that's really the way to go. Because in these documents, you find all kind of family information, birth dates, death dates, and uh, all of that. And through that, that's how I was able to go back even further and uh, research uh, Thomas's family. And uh, uh, also, uh, Ancestry.com was extremely helpful in this because. I was able to contact some of these uh, some of these relatives of ours that we didn't even know about. So, and uh, it's, it's, it's all just a matter of people coming together and sharing ideas, and you know. And uh, I'm just glad that I'm, again, I'm just glad that everybody was able to come because this means so much to me to, to know that uh, all the things that my ancestor Thomas Lincoln went through for so many years. It was, just kind of buried beneath the sand, and now it's, now it's all coming back up, and he's being remembered for his uh, sacrifice that, that he chose to make. He wasn't drafted or anything. He chose to sign up and go and, and go fight for the Confederacy. So, and uh, he was a very brave man. Is a uh, from what my cousin Jack Badon was telling me the other day. After he got his arm arm cut off, he could have very well chose to come home, but he didn't do that. He decided to stick with it and uh, fight till the very end. So, in the end, I'm, I can say that I'm extremely proud to have a man like Thomas Macon as my ancestor. He was a very courageous man, and uh, he's something to definitely tell to tell the future generations about. So, now, I'd like to call on our compatriot from Knoxville, Tennessee. Come give us a history of the Wilt, Alabama. Well, let me say, my fellow compatriots, friends, and kin, today I'm honored to be in the city of my birth, and in the birthplace of my mother and my father, and in the place where over 270 years ago, my ancestors first made their homes in the new world. 
even more so, it's an honor to be here in the midst of this hallowed ground where many, many of those ancestors are at rest, awaiting the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the day of resurrection. One of these ancestors, Thomas Hill Macon, joined the Confederate Army and was in Company A of the 12th Alabama Infantry. And it is an honor, an extreme honor, to tell you all the story of the 12th Alabama Confederate States Army. Company A was mustered into state service here in Mobile on January the 3rd, 1861. They were known as the Lafayette Guards. And on June the 8th of 1861, they were ordered by the governor of Alabama to proceed by the Mobile and Ohio Railway to Richmond, Virginia where on June the 12th, they were mustered into Confederate service with the Army of Northern Virginia. Once they were formally organized, the 12th Alabama had a total of 10 companies and totaled 2,860 men, all sons of Alabama. They were then immediately sent to Manassas Junction. <clears throat> In March of 1862, they were in the siege of Yorktown, and on May the 4th and 5th, the Battle of Williamsburg. Soon after, they were in the Battle of Seven Pines, where they charged the redoubt of a Yankee division, and they overran three defensive lines. During this engagement, 73 of the men were killed, and 141 were wounded. On June the 26th, they were in the Battle of Mechanicsville, and immediately the next two days afterwards, they were in the Battle of on July the 1st and 5th, they were in the Battle of Malvern Hill, where only 120 men answered muster after this battle. On September 14, 1862, they participated in the Battle of Boonsboro, and then came the single bloodiest battle in American history, the single bloodiest single day battle. They were in the Battle of Antietam on September the 17th, 1862. 27 men were killed, 69 wounded, and 33 went missing. The colors of the 12th Alabama were lost to the 57th New York They were shortly then reorganized, and then in the year of 1863 came the Battle of Chancellorsville. It was on the 1st to the 4th of May, where 14 men were killed, 88 men were wounded, and it was here at this battle, Chancellorsville, that Thomas Hill Macon was taken prisoner of war. On June the 9th, the 12th Alabama participated in the Battle of Brandy Station. And then on July 1st through the 3rd, 1863, came one of the most memorable battles in the war. If not in the history of modern warfare, the Battle of Gettysburg. The 12th Alabama lost a total of 17 men and had 66 wounded, one of these being Thomas Hill Macon, who had only been shortly exchanged beforehand. As you all may be well aware, he lost his left arm due to a wound received during Gettysburg. It was after the battle that the 12th slowly retreated, and painfully retreated back into Virginia with General Lee. And for the rest of the year, they saw action only in the Bristow campaign with two men were killed. The year 1864 brought the battles of the Wilderness, Spotsylvania, Lynchburg, Monocracy, Fort Stevens, the Second Battle of Kernstown, Snickers Gap, and the battles of Winchester and Cedar Creek, where many, many men lost their lives. In mid-December, the 12th Alabama withdrew from the Shenandoah Valley and were placed and proceeded to take part in the defenses of the Confederate capital at Richmond, Virginia. On April the 9th of 1865, the 12th Alabama surrendered with General Robert E. Lee and the remainder of the Army of Northern Virginia. Only five officers and 62 men out of the original 2,860 remained. 67 men total out of 2,860 survived. Thomas Hill Payton, our ancestor, was born to the Today, we can take pride in the heroics and the accomplishments of the men of the
the 12th Alabama Infantry. For in our daily struggles of life, we can learn from their example. This is our heritage. We can have the courage to prevail when we are faced with what seems to be overwhelming odds. And we can have fortitude to never give in when we are confronted or faced with difficulties. And most of all, perhaps, we can have loyalty to remain faithful to our faith and our beliefs and our morals. Never forget, never forget that these men fought and shed their blood and gave their lives under this flag. This flag bears the cross of St. Andrew, who was the first called disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it is not by chance that this emblem was chosen to represent the South. Let us then all honor them by keeping their faith and their memory alive within us. For even though I may rest my head in Tennessee, I remember where I come from, and I am proud to be a son of Alabama. And I am also honored, blessed, and highly favored to be the son of a Confederate veteran. Three cheers, compatriots, for the 12th Alabama Infantry. Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hooray. 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 Yes. Thank and you. now, uh, okay. We believe in the Macon family and the descendants of giving honor where it's been. And Raphael Sims Camp Number 11 has done us a great service today. So if you would, before we proceed any further, wow. it is with great appreciation that we present to Admiral Raphael Sims Camp Number 11, sons of Confederate veterans, from the family of Private Thomas Hill Mason, the certificate of appreciation for your kindness and assistance. Y'all ever meet anybody that you just make friends with right off the bat? <laughs> now here's one of them, Terry Bailey right here. <laughs> And none of this would be possible without his help. It's hard to organize and get an event going from a state away. But none of this truly would have been possible without Terry. So therefore, in token of our appreciation, the family of Thomas Hill Macon, the descendants, we present you to you very well. This is just of our appreciation. Uh, I'm humble. Sometimes I don't got words and one of them's right now. <laughs> you know, it don't make any difference how hard you try to put one of these things together. You're always going to leave something out or do something wrong. And I was just standing here looking at my little order of service here and it dawned on me that we had not saluted the Confederate flag. So at this time, I would like to ask y'all to stand with us and let us salute the Confederate flag. I salute the Confederate flag with affection reverence and undying devotion to the cause for which it stands. Thank you. You may be seated. All right. At this time, we want to unveil the stone. I mean, uh, Jack. Do we have any granddaughters here? Great granddaughters. Now at this time, 
time we want to unveil the Southern Cross of Honor. At one time, all throughout the South, these Southern Crosses of Honor were, were on the Confederate graves. However, uh, the ne'er-do-wells in the world and the vandals and such as that, a lot of them have been lost and, and stolen, and, and it's not very uh, un it's not uncommon to have someone find these things in scrap yards and such as that. Uh, as far as I know, this will be the second one in this cemetery. I'm, I'm sure at one time there were a lot of them in here, but like I say, uh, the vandals uh, and thieves and ne'er-do-wells in this world tend to enjoy uh, stealing stuff out of cemeteries. So Jack, we'll do the honors here again, sir. Y'all, this is beautiful. She's a great-granddaughter that lives out of state. You're a great-great-granddaughter? And where did you travel from? Mobile. Over here. Oh, you live in Mobile? Mm -hmm. You don't want to ask ladies their age. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any lady under 100? <laughs> She's proud of it. And proud of it. Uh, any over 50? It certainly is a distinct <coughs> honor and privilege and pleasure to have our UDC ladies with us today from the Electra Sims Colson chapter. Mm -hmm. Thank you ladies for being here at this time. If y'all would yes. like to appreciate it. service for thee 
And may the blessings of God rest and abide here forevermore. Amen. Amen. Composed by the Reverend Dr. Randolph McKim, he wrote, Not for fame or fortune, not for place or rank, not lured by ambition or goaded by necessity, but in simple obedience to duty as they understood it. These men suffered all, sacrificed all, dared all, and died. We are proud to join with you today in memory of your Confederate ancestors. playing double duty my artillery man didn't yes. make it today <laughs> but that's besides the point we uh we're gonna get her done and have fun doing it and and, and, and hopefully make uh thomas hill make him proud of us uh this time uh, we want to we do a roll call of honor uh so in remembrance and celebration of the honor and courage of Thomas Hill Macon, who offered his service to the Confederate States of America in defense of our freedoms and for the promise of American liberty. President and Spirit, sir. Libation detail, please come forward. Now we're going to do a part of a cer uh, part of our ceremony here that to me is, is, is my favorite. Uh, it's called the Libation Ceremony. The ceremony is, is very ancient and Interestingly enough, there's not hardly a culture in this world that does not have a ceremony similar to this. It's symbolic of sharing a drink with a fallen comrade. Now, uh, for those of us who are enthusiasts of the Confederate heritage, when we have the libation ceremony, our minds are drawn back to a horrible day in December of 1863 at the Battle of Fredericksburg at a place called Mary's Heights. The uh, slaughter was just incredible. There was a young private from South Carolina who could stand it no more. And over the objections and reservations of his commanding officer, he gained permission to grab up a bunch of canteens and go out on that battlefield and offer some aid and comfort to those wounded soldiers. Uh, he asked if he could do it under a flag of truce. The officer said, no, a flag of truce is just not going to happen. The young man says, well, I'll just take my chances grabs up these canteens and he goes out there on that battlefield and he starts offering aid and comfort to these, these uh, wounded and dying soldiers. And uh, Private Kirkland became known that day as the Angel of Mary's Heights. Sometimes water and sometimes milk and sometimes Jack buying his silk. But whatever the tipple has been, we shared it together in vain or bliss. And I warm to you, friend, when I think of this, we drank from the same canteen. We have shared our blankets and tents together, and we have marched and fought in all kinds of weather. And hungry and full we have been, had days of battle and days of rest. But this memory I cling to and I love the best we drank from the same canteen. For when wounded I lay on the center slope, with my blood flowing fast and so little hope, upon which my faint spirit could lean, oh, then I remember you came to my side, and bleeding so fast it seemed both must have died, 
we drank from the same canteen. Ready. Aim. Fire. <laughs> Cover. On. Order. On. Thank God for an 1862 big lighter. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord. We have a lot of fun doing living histories and such, and. Uh, one of the things I always tell those kids is that when I get ready to light that slow match that that's a certified uh, 1862 big lighter. Uh, in closing, I want to share a few things with you. Uh, first of all, uh, Sims Camp was very fortunate uh, several years ago to receive the deed to a piece of property over here in Spanish Fort. That property is uh, Fort McDermott. Uh, there were two other forts with uh, Fort McDermott there during the siege of Spanish Fort. And these uh, about 2,000 uh, Confederate soldiers held off 40,000 invading Yankees for about two weeks. Then uh, uh, they evacuated back to Blakely where the last battle on this side of the uh, Mississippi River was fought, of course. Uh, the wonderful thing is that on April the 11th, uh, the Alabama Division of the Sons of Confederate Veterans uh, we'll be holding a heritage rally at Fort McDermott, as well as our annual Confederate uh, memorial service will be held there. I think it's interesting that it's almost 150 years to the day that we will be dedicating uh, uh, Fort McDermott, which will be com known coming forward as uh, uh, Fort McDermott Confederate Memorial Park. So we're real proud of that. Those of you here in Mobile, if y'all are uh, inclined to join us on April 11th at 1 o'clock at Fort McDermott, up on top of Spanish Fort Hill, we'll have some uh, parking and shuttles over there at Cheryl's Restaurant, but uh, you're more than welcome to be a part of it. Also, uh, we are in Confederate, I mean, uh, Magnolia Cemetery. Right across the way here is Confederate Rest. There's over 1,100 soldiers buried over there. Uh, the obelisk that you see over there was a, a full statue of a Confederate soldier one time. However, I think in the 1930s it was struck by lightning, uh, and so it was recarved into an obelisk. The remains of the soldier is on a pedestal off to the side of the cemetery uh, over there. Uh, we have five Confederate generals buried here in uh, uh, Magnolia Cemetery, one of them, of course, being Braxton Bragg, and I think there's a pretty interesting family story about that, but we won't go there, right? We'll leave that alone. Also, uh, right over here, uh, you'll see the battle flag on that monument right there. That's the youngest Confederate general of the war between the states, John Herbert Kelly. He had just turned 21 years old when he made general, and he was killed at the Battle of Franklin. He was interred in, uh, in uh, Tennessee. Then he was uh, disinterred and reinterred here in Magnolia Cemetery. So uh, we really are proud of, uh, of uh, Magnolia Cemetery. We're proud of the job that, that the uh, city does, as well as the Friends of Magnolia Cemetery does, to keep it up and, and, and make it something to be proud of. Uh, Okay, Chaplain, would you come forward, sir? Finally, uh, in closing, we thought about what Thomas Macon did during the war. We know that he gave up an arm. And, and, and the thing that I think a lot of times that we fail to realize is these guys went off and fought a very bloody war. I mean, it was just, it was horrible. Uh, essentially what happened is the Industrial Revolution caught up with warfare, and, and, but, but medicine and such, that didn't keep up with it. And, 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 and quite frankly, uh, for him to lose that arm and live through it tells me that he was a, a man of a, a, a strong uh, physical uh, being there and so forth. But my point is this, when they came home, 
they spent the next 11 years trying to get back what had been taken away from them. And you, you call it reconstruction, I prefer to call it destruction. And these fellows dug their feet in, they went to work, and they built the South back to what it was today, what it is today, and, and something that we can be very proud of. And quite frankly, none of us would be who we are had it not been for the stamina of this man after the war. So we want to bear that man. So in closing, I want to share the thoughts of Stephen D. Lee with you. To you, the descendants of Thomas Hill Macon, we commit the vindication of the cause for which he fought. To your strength will be given the defense of the Confederate soldier's good name, the guardianship of his history, the emulation of his virtues, the perpetuation of those principles which he loved and which you also love, and those ideals which made him glorious and which you also cherish. Remember, it is your duty to see that the true history of the South is presented to future generations. Until we meet again, let us remember our obligations to our forefathers who gave us the undeniable birthright of our southern heritage and the vision, desire, and courage to see it perpetuated. Chaplain. Let's pray. Precious Father, thank you for allowing us this time of gathering and remembrance. Thank you for allowing us to honor this Confederate compatriot private Thomas Mason. Thank you for your peace, your mercy, and grace, and for the gift of eternal life, if we would only but believe. And to those gathered here today, I say in all humility, may the Lord bless thee and keep thee. May the Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay. Y'all feel like singing? Jack, lead us off. Load them up, boys. <laughs> oh, I wish I was in the land of cotton. All times there are not forgotten. Look away. Look away, Dixieland, in Dixieland, where I was born, early on the frosty morning. Look away, look away, Dixieland, and I wish I was in Dixie, hooray, hooray, in Dixie's land I'll take my stand Cemetery for years. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna do it one more time for feeling.
Uh, obviously, Kenny had a whole lot to do with yes. getting this thing going, and we want to recognize Kenny. Yes. So, Kenny, on behalf of the Admiral Raphael Sims Camp 11, the UDC, and Magnolia Cemetery, we want you to take this flag. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Kenny! Okay, uh, that pretty much concludes our ceremony. However, while this flag is out, I want to point one thing out to you. Being that, that uh, Thomas Hill Macon served in the Army of Northern Virginia, this is the flag of General Lee's headquarters. Interesting thing about that pattern, though, is uh, Mrs. Lee designed this flag for him, and that is representative of the Ark of the Covenant. That tells you how devoted of a Christian man that uh, Robert E. Lee was right there. The three-shot volley that we just did, that's symbolic of a 21-gun salute. So, uh, again, folks, uh, God bless y'all for being here. It was our pleasure to serve you, and by all means, uh, have a wonderful Dixie Day. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.